Uh, welcome to the lecture number 70. So, uh, we will start today uh, with the uh, drag due to the aerodynamics means uh, aerodynamic drag arising because of the molecular impact on the satellite. Okay. So, uh, molecular impact means in the atmosphere. So, this is the earth and earth radius is around 6400 or approximately 6374 kilometers and say you are uh, your satellite is in the orbit of 300 kilometer altitude 300 or 250 kilometer altitude which is the normal altitude 250 kilometer is the normal altitude at which the uh, satellite is launched. So, at this attitude um, altitude drag is considerable. Okay. So, if you leave the satellite in that position. So, slowly slowly its orbit will decay and it will the satellite will enter into the completely into the earth atmosphere and it will burn out or either it will if the whole thing does not burn out. So, it will hit the hit, hit the earth. So, this molecular impact on the satellite this generates drag we, and earlier I have told you that the aerodynamic drag can be and the solar radiation drag can be modeled as the disturbance to the system. So, aerodynamic drag can be modeled as a constant term and solar radiation as a periodic term. Okay. However, we are going to uh, work it out here how the aerodynamic drag and the uh, molecule uh, this uh, solar radiation torque will uh, drag and the torque in which form they appear, we will try to work it out. So, if this is your body, the satellite body and uh, it is a moving in the atmosphere at uh, in the orbit, this is a 250 kilometer or the 300 kilometer orbit, where the atmosphere is considerably rarefied. and molecular distribution may look like this. So, we can have the mean path of the molecule here lambda mean path which we call the mean free path actually mean free path of the atmospheric molecule. One kilometer. So as you go to higher altitude, this distance will keep on increasing. Okay. Distance between these molecules may be small. It's a order of magnitude is small as compared to this one kilometer. But this mean free path before one molecule collides with another molecule, it will be quite large. So, uh, this drag basically it arises because of the two factors as you have learnt in your physics that say if this is the ball it is a wall here and another hard ball it is moving toward this one. and says v is the velocity. So, it goes and collides with this okay, and then returns back without loss of any, uh, any energy. We consider that it is a perfectly elastic collision. So, it is a linear momentum is m v and while it returns the linear momentum becomes minus m v. So, the change in linear momentum becomes minus m v minus m v. So, this is delta t change in the linear momentum. So, this is minus 2 m b and how much time this impact has taken place. So, accordingly you can uh, calculate the corresponding uh, force 
imparted to the wall or uh, imparted to the wall by this uh, ball this is your ball okay. so this will be given by so basically if you are up this is the change in momentum so let us write it another way this is delta p this is the change in momentum so if f is the force applied or say df is the force applied so df by dt uh, sorry the dp by the linear momentum sp so change in momentum dp by dt that gives you the force applied so f times dt that gives you dp or delta p so this is the impulse so the total uh, in this case what we are going to do that there are two types of things here one is the returning another type can be like this ball goes here and then gets stuck to this so it's a losing its total momentum which was mb so the this lost momentum will appear as a force applied on this wall okay the same kind of phenomenon uh, it occurs with the satellite so in the case of the satellite say if this is a small area of the satellite da whose normal we define like this na cap which is going inside here in this case so the na i have shown here in this place remember okay and this velocity this is incoming velocity and this is the v out outgoing velocity so what we see that if we break the components of this velocity along this direction and this direction so this component will remain unchanged only this component vertical component will change okay and this we call as the spectacular this yes, sorry the specular a specular reflection on the other hand we can also have the case where the particle is coming here in okay and thereafter it is absorbed in the top layer of the surface of the solar cell or it may be the uh, it may be your uh, satellite body so say the this is let, let us take this to be a satellite body right now okay. so this can be the satellite body so then once it is coming inside and then it loses all its velocity and la later on it's ejected so this ejection it's a probabilistic phenomenon and it can be ejected in any direction okay and this type of uh, ejection it's a called the diffuse reflection so this a specular reflection it uh, happens only with only few molecules may experience this while majority of molecules experience 
diffuse reflection. So, in a specular reflection, two things happen. bounds of without any change in energy and the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. While in the diffuse case, incoming molecules are absorbed by the surface layer contamination and then the molecule will molecules will forget slash they lose the memory of its direction for molecules forget slash the direction information in from which they were coming they were coming and also lose their energy information means how much energy they were containing that is also lost. So, thereafter the molecules live with a probabilistic distribution of kinetic energy. Okay. So, this is the these two are the different mechanism totally uh, and this mechanism uh, it happens only with few molecules, but majority of them go diffuse reflection. So, we will take up this and uh, all the calculations are done based on this only not on this. So, this is not used only this will be used. So, the following assumptions will be made
totally lost to the mean thermal motion of the atmosphere. as compared to the spacecraft speed. Why this is so? Uh, because say this is your spacecraft and if your molecules are arbitrarily moving. So, uh, here like some one is going there, someone is going there, uh, okay, this way it is a movement is there. So, then the analytical analysis in the pro analysis we will get the problem. While if we assume that, let us say that I assume them to be static. Okay. So, whatever the velocity of the satellite is there, so the relative velocity of these two will be nothing but the velocity of the satellite, which I can show like this. So, the they then will be assumed to be a column, this uh, say if, uh, a number of beams are there okay, and going like this. So, then they form as the collimated beam and then the analysis becomes easy here in this case. So, therefore, mean thermal motion of the atmosphere is quite a small or it will be ignored. So, this will be ignored. and momentum transfer from the molecules leaving the surface is negligible. Okay, so, this simplifies the situation a lot. Okay. If the satellite is spinning If the surface satellite is spinning, then the relative motion between the surface element means a, a small element of the surface, say delta A or d A, then the relative motion of the it is okay. Uh, the relative motion between the surface element and the center of mass surface element and the center of mass speed is and the center of mass is much smaller. This is center of mass for the satellite as you know this will be uh, this velocity 
will be large okay. 7.5 to 8 kilometers per second. Okay. So, th this is very large and your satellite may be rotating say or at most at 0.1 radian per second. Okay. So, you can calculate here say if it is 0.1 radian per second and some distance your d a element is located at 1 meter and omega is 0.1 rad per second 0.1 radian per second. So, what will be the velocity here omega cross r. So, this is 0.1 times 1 okay, this meter per second. So, that means, this is just 0 0.1 meter per second the speed of this element. On the other hand, this is 7.5 to 8 kilometer per second. So, let us take this to be 8 kilometer. So, 8000 meter per second. So, what is the ratio? The ratio is, so this is 10 to the power minus 4 and divided by 8. So, approximately that turns out to be 10 to the power minus 5. Okay. So, this is very small. Okay. So, under this assumption then we can calculate what will be the drag and the torque on the satellite. So, we have this body and on the body there is a small element which will so as d a and in cap this is the unit vector which is going inside. Okay. So, in cap going inside. So, a small surface uh, a small element on the surface of this satellite. Okay. We are the relative velocity of the particle with respect to the satellite. So, if you uh, take the atmosphere to be at rest. So, the V r is nothing but the velocity of the satellite. Okay. So, your particle is coming here in this direction. So, what will be the force exerted on this small element? So, let us write this let V r or this is your d a as shown in figure. So, as I have told you that if there is not random motion in the this random thermal motion of the atmosphere. So, all the particles will be coming here in this direction. So, as a collimated beam. then the analysis then becomes easy. Okay. So, let us say this is a tube of length v r. So, all the particles contained in this tube okay. and here is my surface. Okay. This is d a. So, this is d a. So, all the particles contained in and what we will assume that uh, this is your vector here. Let us say I will make a separate figure. 
n is the vector going here n cap and uh, v r is the vector which is going here in this direction this is the v r this angle we write as alpha. So, alpha we write as the angle of attack we can do little better. Uh, we have this surface and uh, normal to this surface is going inside this is n cap and uh, the velocity vector is from this direction ok. So, it is uh, going like this ok. So, this angle is alpha. So, this is v r. Okay, so, all the particles contained in this tube of length v r. So, from here to here this length is v r. So, they, they will strike this surface in one second. Okay. So, all the particles in the tube of length v r will strike the surface d a in unit time, because all of them are having the same velocity. So, any particle which is here, so in one second it will reach here in this place and whichever is near, so it will strike. So, in one second total all of them all the particle in this tube will go and hit this. Okay. So, the momentum transfer in one second will give you the force. Okay. So, we write V r cap equal to V r magnitude and uh, n cap or E n cap this is a uh, unit vector perpendicular to the surface of the or the surface element perpendicular to the surface element and going into the surface. So, the surface element d a we can write as d a times E n cap. So, if you have this surface element here and beam is coming like this in an inclined way okay, and perpendicular to this is going down this is the angle alpha. So, beam is contained in a tube of cross section which is given like this. So, that will be contained in a tube of cross section if this total area is d a. Okay. So, d a cos alpha is the projected area. Projected area. So, in this direction your d a vector is there. So, in this direction its component how much this will be along the v r direction. So, along the v r direction you will have d a dot v r cap and d a is nothing but your d a times e n cap and then v r cap. So, these two are the unit vectors. So, 
v r cap is along this direction v r cap and e n cap is along this direction. Okay. So, what will the, this dot product this is nothing but cos alpha. So, this equal to d a cos alpha and d a cos alpha is your projected area means this area this cross section not this one. So, this is the actual area and this is perpendicular to the beam. Okay. So, beam is coming like this. So, perpendicular to this while this area is like this. So, what will be the impact uh, force applied to the this area can be calculated as d f equal to the force imparted to the surface element element and this will be given by all the particles contained in a tube of length v r. So, this tube is of length v r. So, v r times the cross section area projected cross section area d a cos alpha. Okay. So, this becomes the volume and in this volume from this place to this place okay, all the particles contained in this and the, this will be a very small length. Okay. So, all the particles contained in this it will be hitting the surface. So, let us say rho a is the density of the particle per unit volume. So, rho a times how many what is the number of particles? Okay, so mass of particle per unit volume. So this is we are taking as rho a. Okay. So that means this is the rho a is the atmospheric density there. Atmospheric density at the satellite orbit altitude. So, you multiply by this. So, this becomes mass okay. and then you multiply it by v r. So, that becomes momentum okay. and this total momentum will be imparted to this surface, this surface in one second. So, therefore, this is the force. So, this gives you then v r square rho r times v r square times d a cos alpha and in which direction it is a taking place that also we have to consider. So, this force will be applied along the because of all the particles are working acting like a collimated beam. So, they will be coming and hitting in this direction. So, we also have to multiply here by v r cap. So, this will be in the v r cap direction. So, this is your d f the force imparted to this surface and if you integrate it over the whole area then you get the total force applied to the surface which constitutes the drag. Okay, uh, another important part is what we can see from this figure that this angle alpha should be less than 90 degree okay, or the cos alpha here cos alpha should be positive it should be greater than 0 up to alpha equal to 0 this is okay. you can put it as alpha equal to uh, greater than equal to 0. If it is becoming negative. So, cos alpha less than 0 this is not allowed. Why as you can see here in this figure if this alpha this is the angle between this line and this line. So, if as the angle increases that means it will become tangential to the surface once alpha reaches 90 degree and thereafter it will become here in this direction. That means 
beam is not hitting the surface at all. Okay. So, if beam is not hitting the surface, some beam is coming from this direction. Okay, let us assume that beam is going here in this direction and this is your surface. So, here your surface element is this okay, and this is your E n vector. So, you can see that the angle between this vector if you put here this vector here in this place parallelly. Okay. So, this angle is obtuse angle or it is a greater than basically 90 degree. Okay. So, until unless it is a less than 90 degree it is not going to hit. So, if you know the surface uh, equation the how the surface is uh, oriented with respect to the beam. Okay. So, you can calculate the total force acting on the system. So, here in this case the beam is coming from this direction. So, this is the beam here this is the beam. So, the projected area will be only forming this. So, only on this area this force will act and this area it will not act. Okay. So, we do not have to calculate for the whole area. Similarly, in the case of a solar panel if we have a solar panel here the satellite is there and beam is coming from this side. Okay. So, we have to take just this area not the area on the back. Okay. This is the front area. So, this part must be kept in mind that you do not have to take the case of cos alpha which is less than 0. Okay. So, this case is not considered okay. only the case where cos alpha alpha is less than equal to 90 degree or nearly 90 degree. So, this will be considered. So, you can consider this to be to be mathematically uh, apply it mathematically make it alpha equal to less than equal to 90 degree. So, that cos alpha is greater than equal to 0. Okay. So, uh, this part is uh, now let us consider this part here say you measure theta from alpha from this place. Okay. So, beam is coming here surface element is also it is a going inside this is the normal to this surface. So, alpha is 0 here as you take this surface. So, alpha increases as you take this take this this increases. So, it will keep on going keep on going and then in this domain alpha will be negative once you come to this domain again this alpha will be cos alpha will be positive. So, you have to take this domain also. So, for that reason we will also eliminate this part. So, we will not use this what will we use only this condition will use. So, cos alpha should be so what we conclude that cos alpha should be greater than equal to 0 this is the condition to be used. So, integration of this then uh, the this equation we have written here okay, over the whole surface this will give you the force acting on the satellite body. So, d f we have written as rho a times v r a square d a cos alpha times v r cap and therefore, if drag and here we have assumed that satellite is not spinning. If the satellite is spinning case will be different say this is the main body and here there is there are two solar panels okay. and the satellite is rotating on this side. So, if the molecules are coming from this side. So, you can see that relative angular relative velocity will be higher on this side and it will be lower on this side. 
okay. and because of this there will be a differential torque applied here this is the force applied is a plus d f extra force and here the corresponding force will be f minus d f little less than that. So, this together this difference it causes a torque which is in opposite direction. So, this will be the differential torque okay. and this will cause the body to uh, decelerate in a spin. Okay. If it is spinning like this, so because of this impact of the atmospheric molecules, its angular speed will slowly decrease. So, that part will come uh, later on the lecture. So, if drag this becomes our rho a v r a square d a cos alpha times v r cap and to take care of the where the this cos alpha should be greater than equal to 0. So, for this we use this h function which called the heaviside function. So, h cos alpha where h dot we write is as the heavy side function h e a v i heavy side function. If cos alpha is positive this will be 1. So, this quantity h cos alpha this will be 1 if cos alpha is greater than equal to 0 and uh, h cos alpha this will be equal to 0 if cos alpha is less than 0. So, this characteristic can be included here in this place, but not characteristic this is the information the how the surface is uh, distributed. Okay, now, whatever is not dependent on the surface distribution. So, this is integration over the surface. So, those things can be taken outside. So, we can write this as rho a v r a square it is not depending on that surface. Okay. So, this becomes d a or uh, we can also write first this part h cos alpha times d a remember this is either 1 or 0. Okay. So, d a cos alpha and this times v r cap. So, this is f drag and drag takes place in the direction of v r cap. So, this is nothing but your projected area. So, this quantity total it turns out as projected area A p. So, this is rho A v r a square times A p times v r cap. So, this is the atmospheric drag acting on the satellite and this will tend to decelerate the satellite okay. and it is a square of the velocity. Okay, remember this is very high, this is very low, but this is very high then. Okay. So, all the fragments of the this uh, Sakti mission where the satellite was shot down by India. So, all those fragments because of this drag will slowly enter into the atmosphere, it, it will decelerate those fragments, the speed will reduce and as the speed reduces it is a losing its energy. And therefore, as I we have written in the last time, the energy per unit mass is minus mu by 2 a. So, it is the semi major axis will as E prime becomes smaller and smaller, okay. more and more negative. So, A is increasing, uh, A is decreasing and decreasing. This is a semi major axis. So, A is decreasing and decreasing and therefore, this will become more and more and more negative and there will be a time once the orbit then 
enters into the atmosphere. Okay. So, it enters the atmosphere in the atmosphere this is the atmosphere level and then this is here it will start burning once it gets into the dense atmosphere it will start getting heated then it will as the temperature rises it will burn out or some of the fragments if it is not totally burned out it will fall on the earth surface. Okay, so, if, uh, we will stop here in this place and uh, continue uh, in the next lecture. Okay, so, this A p we can write here this is the projected area or area perpendicular to the velocity vector, area perpendicular to the velocity vector. Okay, so, next time we are going to uh, compute the torque acting because of this uh, drag okay, and thereafter we have to consider the case of the solar radiation pressure and then we will wind up. So, we will come to the end of this course. So, thank you very much for listening for today.